In today's lesson, we'll cover how to build a static site based on Hugo's static site generator. We're going to add a Ionic theme to this created by A. John P. In the advanced portion of this lesson, we're going to cover Netliffy's template Victor Hugo and how we can leverage this setup that will include NPM and also allow us to do our scripting that we need to push Algolia indexes. I'm not going to cover the quick start for Hugo to install it. You can find that on the lessons page. To get started, go ahead and do Hugo new site, and then we're going to call this lesson for Hugo Ionic. Let's open it up in Visual Studio Code at this point. You can see that we have an empty structure for a base Hugo project. If we run Hugo, it'll immediately project out or create three pages in our static content, which is in our public directory. Looking at that, we don't have an index.html yet, and we're going to correct that right now. What we're going to be doing is creating the layout for the home page, and that's going to be at index.html. This is also a special type of page because it's going to end up being a list type page. You can read more about it on Hugo's main site. But when we create Hugo new underscore index.md, that is the base file for the list, and we can show it on the browser once we refresh. So what we have to look at is creating our markdown for the syntax for the actual page itself so that it can produce something. If you go ahead and try this, it's not going to show up. So we need to make sure that our main layout file, we actually put in the dot content. If you end up seeing a blank page like I do, we need to remember to update our underscore dot index MD file so that it's not a draft anymore. Now Hugo Go will start picking up underscore index dot MD and it'll produce the page from the markdown. Now that you have the basic example down, what we're going to do is start using agent p-hugo i I always recommend tracking all of your changes, even when just kind of going through a sample, so that way you don't get frustrated later on. So let's go ahead and add the git init on this. And we're gonna go ahead and clean up a couple files out here. The index.md file that sits under content, as well as the index.html under layout. The most simple method to add a theme to your Hugo project is just to clone it directly into the themes folder. There are more advanced methods that you can do with uh, Git submodules, and I will post that as part of the lesson on ajonp.com. Now that we have the themes folder, we can go to the example site that's built within it, go ahead and copy everything that's in the content folder, and we're gonna paste that inside of our current content folder. It's just moving some sample files in. What we'll also need is the config.toml file that is in the theme itself. And we can move that again back within our own project by just copying and pasting. Once this is complete, you can do Hugo serve and it will show the current website. As you can see in the homepage file, there are recent lessons. This is preset to the four most recent lessons and you can always override that in your base of however you want to. We're gonna go ahead and go through our git changes and just start pulling out some of the files that we dropped in just so I can show you that it'll automatically clean up on the fly and then it will remove those lessons from both the home page and the lessons list. Here's an example how the GitHub button goes to HMP LLC currently. What we can do is go to our config.toml and change that to go Hugo. And what will happen is it'll go to the Hugo site. This could be your site as well. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see a section in the toml that has menu. And this controls all of the menus that are on the left side for instance, if you want to remove lessons and just leave the blog out here, all you have to do is delete it. Speaking of blog, I'll show you how to update this page. What we're going to do is clean out all of the content within the, the markdown itself. Once that's all cleaned up, you can start to edit the page, uh, update the tags, categories, title, subtitle, and the markdown itself within. And then we're going to go ahead and update our main image to be the angular. We're starting to get a little bit long on this lesson, so I just want to leave you with how to update the styles for Ionic. I'm going to place a button within the markdown itself, which is probably not the best thing to do. But then I'm going to update the main CSS files so that we can correct the theme and adjust that button image for whatever branding that you might be using. You can take the CSS out of the theme folder under theme static CSS and custom CSS. And then we'll place that within our own directory by creating under static a CSS folder and custom.css. You could copy and paste this as well.
You can go into this custom CSS and pick like color danger and then change that to black and you'll actually see the button update to a black button. Power of having Ionics variables within your root allows you to change out any theme that you want to. If you go to the color generator on Ionic framework in the beta section, you can actually play around with all of the different color settings and use those within the project. Now the reason I don't recommend adding HTML in your markdown is that you could drop that markdown into any project. I would take and change the layout files themselves to make your project fit for your needs. AJ usually prefers a dark theme. Please join me next time with Algolia indexing automation and deploying to Firebase hosting using CI CD. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so AJ can keep on programming.